This week, astronomers have detected an advanced artificial probe moving through the solar system, yet at the same time we are facing the cancellation of a major next generation space telescope. Welcome to the Cool Worlds channel, I'm Professor David Kipping, and today we're breaking down some of the latest space news. Cosmic greetings, cool worlders. Let me just start today's video by thanking the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation, who have generously decided to help support our research program here at the Cool Worlds Lab. It's a real honor to win support from this foundation, and it will allow us to push into more high-risk science in the future. Now, back to the theme of today's video. First up, scientists are having a ball sciencing the crap out of Elon Musk's space roadster. At the same time, there is a small but very vocal minority of people who are claiming that Elon Musk somehow faked the Falcon Heavy launch. Flat Earthers in particular are sort of compelled to do this because the images, of course, that we saw from space clearly show a round Earth. As a scientist, I find this whole thing kind of ridiculous. I mean, it's actually unclear to me if these people are just trying to seek attention or if they genuinely somehow believe this to be the case. Science 101, the very premise of science is that if you want to learn about the world around you, then you should use the evidence. If you stubbornly stick to a hypothesis in the face of overwhelming and independently verifiable evidence, then you are not engaging in a line of logical inquiry. You are simply adopting a immutable dogmatic view of the world. That's not how science works. Well, if the witnesses and photos of the launch itself weren't enough for you, nor the photos of the orbital burn taken by people on their iPhones who looked up at the sky that night, nor even the live web feed from SpaceX taken from inside the Tesla itself, don't worry, astronomers have got you covered because we too have been observing the Tesla using telescopes here on the ground. Now a good question to ask is why astronomers have actually been doing this at all? Well, apart from the sheer fun of it, I mean, let's face it, it's pretty cool, it's actually pretty useful as a way of tracking what an artificial space probe would look like in our solar system. With the recent commotion about Oumuamua and interstellar probes, by the way, you can check out a video about that up here, there is definitely more interest and traction about the idea of searching our solar system for alien artificial spacecraft. Okay, so what did astronomers actually see here? First off, some astronomers actually had their clear skies screwed up by the launch, as you can see here from a feed recorded at the MMT telescope. Second, even at its current very distant location from us, it's fairly easy for astronomers to spot the roadster and the upper stage, even using like a half a meter class telescope, as you can see here. Now, now of course at over a million kilometers away by now, the Tesla is far too distant for us to be able to resolve the shape of it, but it still reflects sunlight and thus shines brightly in the sky as it traverses across the solar system. The third cool thing I want to point out is that by monitoring the brightness variations, astronomer Eric Dennehy was able to measure the rotation rate of the Roadster to within 360 milliseconds. And fourth, if you record the color and the brightness of the vehicle and compare it to other known asteroids as you can see here, you can actually see that it really sticks out as an outlier, implying that it is not natural. Essentially, the Roadster appears excessively red for something that we would expect to have formed naturally within the solar system. Finally, I want to point out that dynamicists have been having fun poking holes in Elon Musk's claim that the Tesla will orbit the sun for billions of years, whereas dynamical simulations from Hanno Ryan and collaborators show that an impact is likely with the Earth within a few tens of millions of years, in fact. Now, amidst all all of this fun, astronomers have actually had a pretty bad week because President Trump recently issued a budget which completely zeroes out funding for a next generation space telescope called WFIRST. WFIRST would be a Hubble class telescope due to fly in the mid 2020s that would study the acceleration of the universe and the mysterious dark energy force responsible for it. Now, 70% of all the stuff in the universe is dark energy, but we know almost nothing about it, so that alone is pretty damn interesting for a mission to try and investigate, but if that wasn't enough, WFIRST will also have an exoplanet component too, where it should detect many hundreds, even thousands of new exoplanets. In an interesting twist, NASA actually managed to save some money with this telescope by essentially repurposing a mirror that was donated to them by another government agency. It's a pretty weird story, 
Back in 2012, the National Reconnaissance Office, or the NRO, said that they had not one, but two spare Hubble-class telescopes just sat in a warehouse not doing anything. Do you want them, NASA? So presumably the NRO either had a complete surplus of Hubble-class telescopes sat in their warehouse, or the technology within them was so out of date they just didn't see it used for them whatsoever. And either way, it's pretty wild to think about that, and certainly NASA have benefited by this donation, so thank you NRO. Now astronomers, believe me, were more than happy to take these telescopes off the NRO's hands, but unfortunately these telescopes are designed to look down and not up meaning that the optics was all wrong for doing astronomy. So of course this means that a lot of modification was necessary to the telescope, they had to of course build scientific instruments to it, they had to pay for the launch of course as well, and then of course all of the project management that goes with a mission like this. So in total it ended up being like 3.2 billion dollar budget. So yes NASA probably did save a significant amount of money here because each one of those telescopes was probably worth over a quarter of a billion dollars to begin with, but it wasn't like a order of billions of dollars that NASA saved from this. So coming back to this issue of the president's new budget, I think it was particularly surprising because every decade, US astronomers get together and agree about what the priorities are for the community over the coming decades. And during the last one in 2010, the top priority, the number one thing that we need to focus on more than anything else was identified as being the W-FIRST telescope. One of the senior astronomers who is leading the W-FIRST project was interviewed by the New York Times this week and he was quoted as saying that a handful of people within the bureaucracy have overturned decades of community-driven processes and tried to set the direction for space astronomy. Now, of course, whether this budget is actually realized and passes, that's a completely different issue. But even if W first survives this, I think what's a little bit concerning about this is that the astronomy community's voice and their recommendations have essentially been sort of ignored and just crossed through here. And purely as an astronomer and a person who cares about astronomy, that's concerning about the plans and the future development of our field. But those are just my two cents. As always, I really want to hear what you all think out there. How did you react when you heard the news about this budget? Do you think that WFIRST will still ultimately fly and we should just ignore this? And are you excited about the idea of WFIRST and this mission to study dark energy and exoplanets? Let me know what you think down below in the comments section. So that wraps us up. Thank you so much for watching this video, everybody. Of course, as always, if you like these videos and you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button so you can get all of the latest videos coming out of our channel. We have several new research videos on the way. We're actually just backing them up now. Uh, so stay tuned for those. And until the next video, stay thoughtful and stay curious.